Well, Matrix and Roadshow fans, we're going to be talking about Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. And by the way, before we forget, happy 4th of July to everybody. Right, Rhodes? Good morning and happy 4th to everybody that's going to be checking out this video. And be safe out there. Don't drink and drive, but eat lots of barbecue, look at yes. fireworks, watch some baseball. Yep. baseball I got some um, ribs, sausage, and hot dogs on the smoker right now. And I'm, I'm um, doing bur I'm doing burgers and dogs later. So nice, nice, nice. Uh, as you guys know, Rhodes likes to go into reactions kind of fresh. He has no idea. Do you have any idea what we're really going to be talking about? Uh, Indiana Jones and the search for more dollars at the theater because I'm crashing straight to hell. Yeah, they're <laughs> losing a bunch of money on this thing, man. The box uh, office is terrible. Oh, it's man, an embar it's an embarrassment. It's, it's, it's an embarrassing. embarrassing. Yeah. It's embarrassing, but we're not going to focus on the box office because it seems like Lucasfilm never learns their lesson. James Mangold came out and pretty much confirmed that he wanted Indiana Jones to be an old, decrepit, sad man. In other words, he Jake Skywalkered Indiana Jones on purpose. Now, Indiana Jones is in Rhodes' top three of all time. Harrison Ford is his favorite actor. They never learn, man. They never learn. It's something about this company, too, when it comes to uh, predominant lead male roles in throughout the history mm -hmm. of yeah. Lucasfilm. It doesn't matter who it is. Obi-Wan, Luke, Boba Fett, The Mandalorian, Indiana Jones. I mean, Lando they, Calrissian. Lando. Pando Lando now. You know, it doesn't let's, really have anything to do with your race. Unbelievable. They destroy every male character. Let's go ahead and get into this, Rhodes. Here we go. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny director deliberately tried to make Indy sad for his film. Rhodes, how did that actually work out for Luke and on Last Jedi? <laughs> It hadn't worked out anybody for anybody in any of these movies. Hell, they made Obi Wan <laughs> sing way too to a lesser extent. They made Han Solo a deadbeat dad. He ends up getting a lightsaber through his gut at the end of a movie and falls off yeah. a bridge. And we <laughs> all knew that he was gonna get, he was gonna <sighs> die when we saw that. It was a done yeah. deal. Yeah. But here we go, man. The disrespect for Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones was never a sad character. He was never sad. He was never pathetic. No. But no, he was full of confidence. Yeah. Uh, check this out here. It says uh, the choice to undo Indy's happy ending was a plot device to make director James Mangold's work story work. In quotations. OK. And uh, this is over here on uh, Pirates and Princesses dot net. And they feel the same way as we do about this. Uh, they say. I will preface this article with a spoiler warning because we're going into that territory to discuss some of the choices made with this film and why Mango thought it was a good idea. The box office has yet to agree. The box office is not going to agree. Rhodes, do you know that that movie in China only made $2.3 million Ooh, on opening day? Wow. Completely wow. flopped in China. Yeah. You know, look, look, I can tell you, China is one of those places you don't rip a, 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 a man's masculinity away from them and expect yeah. to make money in China. They exactly. don't get down with that. Exactly. Um, in an interview with Variety, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny director James Mangold discussed his three year scripting time for the film. Three years and they couldn't get it right. Wow. And why he made some of his choices. From the beginning of this film, Lucasfilm and Disney did what they do best and took away a character's happy ending given to them by the previous owners of the franchise. And I got to say, man, say what you want about uh, Crystal Skull. I love the wedding at the end of uh, Crystal Skull. It just, it it ended perfectly. And there yes. was all kinds of ways they could have went. They could have said, They teased Mutt, Mutt as the Nets, as the heir apparent. Well, and they could, but in this case, they could just simply say, hey, he's off doing blah, blah, blah. I mean, there's all kinds of ways they could have played this. Yeah, and and chose not to. Um, it's sad. It was a really good ending to that film. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I may watch that today. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. 
Um, so we already watched the other three, so maybe we'll have to watch uh, Crystal Skull. Um, it says Mango decided that for his film, the work he needed to make Indy so grief stricken that he would want to stay in history instead of return to his own time. That's not Indiana Jones. Because usually Indiana Jones would never do that. Just like Luke Skywalker wouldn't toss a lightsaber over his shoulder. Thank you to try to kill his nephew and become a hermit. But I digress. For the new film, James Mangold felt it necessary to remove the family that Indy got in his last movie, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. So he killed Indy's son, Matt Williams, off screen, saying he died in the Vietnam War. This leads to him losing Marion Ravenwood, too. Why? He claims it was uh, partially because of Shia LaBeouf's character not being there. They could have recast him. Yep. Apparently, LaBeouf complained about the fourth film in 2016, so he likely wouldn't return for this one. This is what James Mangold actually said. Quote, you are either going to make a movie all about the two of them or you're going to have to find a way to not have mud around because he was too significant a player in the previous film to just pretend he didn't exist. What? Now, Rhodes. <laughs> I like Brody. I like Brody in um, the original movies. Brody was in um, Raiders and he was in um, uh, Last Crusade. He wasn't in Crystal Skull at all. Did it no. affect the movie? No. 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 I mean, to me, he was, um, Brody was really a minor character. I mean, Mutt, like you said, they could have just said, hey, he's off on doing this and that. You know, Marion well, not being in a movie. I don't. Well, let's, let's be real. Do we truly believe that if they had asked Shia LaBeouf to come back as Mutt Williams in an Indiana Jones movie, he'd have told Harrison Ford no? I don't believe that. But even Espe if he did. Especially in the state of his current career track, yeah, yeah. this could have been a great resurgence with, with, you know, so they could have brought him back, and everybody knows who he is. And for the most part, he, he always plays characters that people tend to like. So uh, I, it's an excuse. They didn't have to bring him back, period. They didn't have to bring him back. And you don't yeah. have to make Indiana Jones sad to not bring him back. Just say he's off. He's got a family of his own, blah, blah, blah. He retired from, you know, yeah. looking for. He didn't take the same path of his, as his father. No big deal. That's you know no what? big in, deal. In the Creed movies, in the Creed movies, Rocky's son was not in the Creed movies, Creed 1, when uh, that movie actually came out. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is because his son played a significant role in Rocky Balboa. But when Creed came out, his son wasn't in the movie, and Creed was still a very, very good movie. Yeah. He yeah. made an appearance, you know, at the end of uh, Creed 2. It worked. But in this case right here, I'm going to be honest. I'm not really buying what um, James Mangold is set, um, selling here. They wanted a woman in this movie to push Indiana Jones around. I tend you to can't believe, have too many. You can't have too many of them in a the movie. I believe it tends to be a directive from Lucasville president. We all know who that is. Kathleen that, Kennedy. She loves that, her some Phoebe Waller-Bridge. If you're going to take the director role in one of these films i think you get some rules probably going into it and this is your main directive you know we we're going to we're going to introduce and i'm sure she doesn't sell it as let's diminish indy and elevate this other character i'm sure she sells this as let's let's elevate a new character into the franchise and right. Blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. I mean, surely she does not sit in a room and literally say, hey, we're going to de-elevate a man. And if she does, my God. Uh, of course, in this day and time, would it shock me if that actually happened? Maybe not, because everybody in no. the room probably probably going to agree with her. They're all going to be right. woke. They're all going to have the same agenda as Kathleen Kennedy. Uh, Jane, I know what James Mango is trying to say here, but I'm going to say this. His previous directing track record does not 
lend itself to to what he did here. Yeah, Ford uh, versus Ferrari is a great movie. Logan is a Logan uh, is a really really good movie. Um, Identity very good. Three Ten to Yuma very good. You know, two two now. Christian Bell was a sadder character in that movie, and and Russell Crowe was sort of the outlaw, t- sort of real masculine character. But Christian Bell found his found his braveness towards the end of that movie and stepped up as a hero. You know. But the difference is, Indiana Jones is an iconic character that already had a track record in four movies. No, oh, I agree. This, I this agree. is not Indiana yeah. Jones. Just like yeah. that was not Luke in the Last Jedi. And I still blame uh, J.J. Abrams for Luke being the way he was because, remember, he wrote him out of The Force Awakens. And if you actually look at Luke's face at the end of um, The Force Awakens, he wasn't happy. No, he wasn't happy. He wasn't happy. At all. So you can, I don't think you can really put all of that blame on Ron Johnson. Of course, he deserves a lot of it. But J.J. Abrams made Luke look mad and grumpy at the end of the force awakens i noticed that when i watched the movie it's like luke don't look too happy we still don't know how much of that was was a a combined effort between jj abrams and kathleen kennedy too we got to remember that as well i mean she's got a she's got a track record now of all kinds of male characters being neutered at this point i mean you want to you want to know something else phoebe waller bridge is box office poison the two lucasfilm movies that lost money in this case, we'll lose money. Both had her in the movie. That's right. Solo and Indiana Jones 5. That's right. That's right. Box office po- poison. It, look, again, there is something to being likable, and she is not likable. No, she's She not. is not likable. She's and not. You've got, what kills me is you have one of the most likable characters in the history of film at your disposal, and you turn him to, into a grumpy old man that's lost everything. Why yeah. does Indiana Jones has, have to lose Marion after finally getting they, – they finally got together after all these years? Yeah. That's they have putrid. To undo, they have to undo what George Lucas created. That's putrid storytelling. Yeah. It's awful. I mean, come on. Is it is it not good to satisfy the fan anymore? The fan can't be happy about the outcome of their beloved characters? That used to be a priority for these people. Now they seem to write in spite of the fandom, which is jacked up. Yeah. I mean, if you ever want somebody to come back and watch your movie more than once, you might not ought to do that. And my best point to that is, Think about all these films and, and properties that's come out from Lucasfilm that I've never actually watched a second time. I mean, by now, John, yeah. I would have seen this Indiana Jones movie twice, possibly three times by now. You want to? I, I, need I need haven't to talk seen about, it once. I want to talk about one more thing also. Have you heard the rumor also that Kathleen Kennedy has been fired now? That came out like days ago that she is done at uh, Lucasfilm now. Well, I don't know how much stake I want to put into that, but we did hear, I believe, last year that she was leaving after Indiana Jones 5. But if there's a time now to actually fire her, this would actually be the time now when you have cost Disney probably, they're probably going to be 250 to 300 million in the hole on this movie, one of the all time biggest flops ever. She might be secretly forced out, but they will never present it as a firing. No, ever. they won't. You they can won't present that. it like that. It'll be a retirement, or I heard a slide into a, a lateral position somewhere else that's not in Lucasfilm, but within Disney. So her being removed from Lucasfilm, sliding into another what would be more of an honorary position with Disney somewhere is yeah. what I had heard maybe like a year ago because they're not going to blatantly and openly fire a woman like Kathleen Kennedy. We unfortunately are not going to get the natural born killer's head on a spike moment with Kathleen Kennedy's career. She's going to be able to leave with dignity. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're not, she doesn't, she does not deserve it, man. She doesn't deserve it. Oh, she has taken a flamethrower 
to an unbelievable I she has ruined the most powerful IP in all of entertainment. Now, Lucasfilm was a layup when <gasps> when Disney bought it was a layup. George Easiest already gave ever. you the, the greatest storyteller of all time, George Lucas, gave you the template for seven eight nine and you said, nah, we know more than you and threw it out. George Lucas to me is the greatest storyteller of all time. He's the greatest world builder of all time when it comes to film. And they just pissed it away. That's all I got, man. You got anything else? George was more concerned with story than he was agenda. Yeah. 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 George wasn't the greatest director, but he, he always said that he was a storyteller. If you talk to George, he says, I am a storyteller. He didn't direct any of the Indiana Jones movies. Right. And they were all iconic. Yep. Yeah. Well, maybe not Crystal Skull, but still, you can't. Look, you Crystal can't, Skull, Crystal Skull is still an entertaining film to it sit is. down and consider. I had fun. I had fun watching it. I did, too. I did, too. I was like. Yeah. But I, when I left, I, when I left the movie theater, I was like, well, this ain't on the level of the first three movies, but it sure as hell ain't um, Last Jedi bad. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to keep it real. I left the theater and I was smiling. Yeah, I wasn't I, like I was. I wasn't like I was. this movie sucks. I was kind of like, uh, it's, it was, it's okay. That's, it a, that's not, the way I felt when I left. It was not the reaction I had when I left bad movies. It was certainly not the reaction I had when I left the Last Jedi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, or even or even the non Zack Snyder cut of Justice League. I left the theater going, Ugh, uh, no, Ugh, you know, Josh Wheaton's Justice League. I was like, this movie sucked. When I left the movie theater, I was like, this movie is awful. It wasn't that's, good. That's, it was not good. It wasn't no. good. No. All right. That's going to wrap it up, guys. Happy 4th of July again. Any other final words, Rhodes? Negative, Ghost Rider. The pattern's full. On All right, guys. We'll be back um, tomorrow with another video on our live stream. And I'm pretty sure there'll be a clip uploaded as well. Peace. We're out. Till next time.